George, what's the good news about this Colorado decision that came from SCOTUS? I don't think there really is any. <laughs> uh, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to think of what the good news is. I will say this. I mean, I understand how people feel about it. I felt the same way. I would rather see Donald Trump beaten at the ballot box, and I think he will be, um, than him being knocked off the ballot. But the problem in this case was there's this provision enacted in the wake of the Civil War that was designed to keep people who could not be faithful to their oath to support the Constitution to keep those people from holding any state or federal office. And that includes uh, the presidency of the United States. The, the court did not buy Trump's principal argument that somehow the president was exempted from this rule that covers every other office holder in the country. So uh -huh. uh, that said, I, I mean, I think that they bought political peace in the sense. I think they understood that the that all nine justices, I think they understood that they there would be a backlash against the court and backlash against the ruling. Um, but, you know, from my standpoint, you know, that's a backlash against the Constitution's explicit language. That said, um, you know, if there is a, a, a silver lining in it, it's not in the Supreme Court's decision. It's in the fact that the Colorado courts and the main uh, attorney, uh, main secretary of state and a, and a court in Illinois have made unrebutted findings that Donald Trump is an insurrectionist. Uh, but I don't find any, you know, I don't find any solace in the court's opinion refusing to apply the law. George, you and I were noodling back and forth this kind of idea of how this decision came to pass from SCOTUS. And one of the things we talked about was Mark Joseph Stern and others pointing out that the metadata from Justice Sonia Sotomayor's concurrence, and I put that in quotes, seems to have begun as a dissent. Talk really quickly about the process by which this opinion was reached, because it seems like it's, it's just one big Google Doc and everybody kind of adds to it. And then that's part of the reason why you ended up with something like that metadata still being available for us to see that perhaps this should have just remained as a dissent. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like writing, you know, writing a document with a bunch of people and, and like exactly as you say, a Google Docs. I mean, they're trying to get, obviously, I don't know who is running the show, but I assume it was Chief Justice Roberts trying to get as many people to join the reasoning of the main opinion as possible. And so they, you take suggestions from people and people are going to say, other justices are going to say, I don't like this language. Could you change that? And at the same time, the opinions can move around. Um, a, a, the, the different people make change their views over the course of time. And I think what happened here was that there was a majority opinion that explicitly said that only co that Congress only by legislation can enforce the 14th Amendment, Section 3, um, not, ju and not just that the states cannot do it, but that Congress can't even do it, for example, when it counts electoral votes on January 6th of each fourth year. And what happened was that triggered, and I think the metadata is consistent with this, that triggered a mm -hmm. very fiery partial dissent from Justice Sotomayor, and then a concurring opinion from Justice Barrett saying, oh, let's not, let's turn the temperature down. And I think what happened was the opinion, as it's finally written, doesn't actually explicitly say that Congress, even Congress, can't overturn, uh, can't make a finding of insurrection and refuse to accept electoral votes. Uh, but the, but the, 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 the concurring opinion, which was originally dissent, calls out the majority for something they don't actually really say. I think it got taken out of the opinion, and I think some of the language in the dissent um, they, kept, they kept anyway because they know what, I mean, the dissent, the current, current opinion, they kept because they know what the real understanding is uh, among some of the justices. Uh, but, you know, Justice, Justice Barrett's concurring opinion, trashing on, sort of trashing on Sotomayor's opinion for using harsh language, it didn't really fit because I think a lot of the harsh language was taken out. So it's just, these opinions were, the bottom line is these opinions were moving around to the very end. And the reason why they were moving around is, frankly, there was just a lot of, I mean, there was, the, there was a quick, quick decision um, and mm -hmm. for, for the Supreme Court with nine people having to agree, but also um, there, there was a lack of reasoning to any of the positions taken by all nine justices because they were doing so in contravention of the plain language of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment.